Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. So this week's guitar lesson is going to be a, a big eye-opener for a lot of you, and I'm really excited about this because I haven't seen this done anywhere online, at least not yet. And this is really designed to help you visualize the neck in a way that you haven't before. It makes it easier when you're improvising. And so what we're really doing is we're taking the caged system, the different chord voicings uh, from caged, and we're matching the pentatonic scales to those chord voicings. So the major pentatonic scale, minor pentatonic scale. It may sound complicated, but I promise you, I've got uh, diagrams that go with this, visual overlays, so you can see what I'm talking about as we get into the lesson. And this is really going to open up uh, your lead playing and help you be able to get places quicker and just visualize things in a way that you haven't before. So I've got the lesson split into two parts. In this video, we'll take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half, download those diagrams that I was talking about, the MP3 jam track, the tablature, all the extra pieces that uh, go with this lesson. You can get those by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP356. Alright, so we have a lot of information to get through in this week's lesson, and I'm really excited about this one because I think this is going to open a lot of doors for a lot of you when it comes to visualizing the neck how do you improvise? You know the scales, you know your chords, but you're still not sure how to put it all together in any kind of meaningful way. So by the end of this, you're going to have a new way of looking at the neck, and you're also going to have some practical uh, applications that you can start to use right away and practice right away so that you can get better with it. So the first thing I want to mention is the caged system, C-A-G-E-D. Those are the first uh, chords that we learned to play on guitar, the C chord, the G chord, the A chord. We learn them down here in first position. Some people call those cowboy chords. But with caged, the whole system of caged, you can take those shapes, those chord shapes, and you can play them all over the neck to get different chords. That's really what it is in essence. And I would refer you back to EP273 if you don't know what caged is at all. If you're watching this and you have no idea what I'm talking about, that was a lesson I did a while ago, and I cover that. I'm going to assume you know what it is, even if you can't do it, as long as you know in theory sort of what it is, just at high level, then you'll be able to follow along. And so with caged, there's a five, C-A-G-E-D, but we're going to boil that down to three. There's really, when you really look at it, there's really three different positions uh, on the neck. There's sort of a middle position, a lower end, and a higher end. Now, I've never seen this explained anywhere. This is just my own little concoction that I came up with a long time ago. But this is how I think of caged. I actually don't think of all five usually. I'm thinking of really three shapes. So what I mean by that is the C shape and the D shape are kind of the same thing. So let's look at uh, an, an E chord, for example. If I were to play an E chord here, that's using the C chord shape out of cage. If I were to play a C chord down here, it looks like that. Slide it up, I'm playing an E chord. That's all I mean by that. So there's your C chord shape. The D chord shape is right there. So look at that. There's a lot of shared notes there between these two. So, so in actual fact, you could kind of look at that as one. That's really just like one shape. Um, so, so that's that's knocked one of them out. The other two that are very similar are the A shape and the G shape. So, using that same E chord, if I look at the E chord, uh, play an E chord using the A shape, it looks like this. So, there's an A first position, slide it up, and I'm playing an E. If I look at the G shape. It's up here, right? But look at the shared notes between those two chords. It's this triad. That triad represents both of those chord shapes because it's played here and it's played here. Same is true with the C and the D. These three notes are shared between those two. So what I like to do then when it comes to caged is I just look at three different positions. Uh, it makes it a lot easier and you're really covering the same basis. And those triads, once you get into that and understand that's just another way to play an E chord. And that could be an E shape or a G shape, it doesn't really matter. That triad represents both. Once you understand that, it makes it a lot easier. It takes two variables out and you're not having to think about so much. This is going to make more sense as we get into it, so just, just bear with me. But there's going to be three positions we're going to look at uh, when it comes to this. Okay, so let's start off then. So this blues is in the key of G and we're going to start off right here and so we're going to go through the one four five uh, chord first so that's going to be our one chord that's our g chord the four chord is your c chord now 
what I always like to do is I like to think of where's the closest C chord to where I'm at. Well, there's one right here. Look at that. I just had to shift a little bit. And what I'm doing here when I shift into this, I'm playing a C chord using the E chord shape out of cage. There's your E chord, right? Slide it up to here, bar on the eighth fret, and you have a C chord. Now I don't need to do the full bar. All I'm doing is just those three strings out of it. So that little triad there. So I'm actually playing tr this triad of the G chord and then this one of the C chord. And to get between the two, my ring finger can stay down the whole time while the other two fingers just uh, switch position. There's your one chord and your four chord. So your five chord is a D chord, right? So your D chord right here, now I'm playing a D chord using that A chord shape. Uh, but look at that triad. That's that same triad I was just showing you a minute ago. There's that triad, and so if I were to play the D chord using the G shape, it would be up here. If I play the D chord using the A shape, it's here. But all I really need is that triad between the two. So now let's look at that one, four, five. We have a G, a C, and a D. And they're all right in this middle area. Now you may have never thought of playing a G, C, and D chord all in this little, little block here in the middle of the neck, but you've got them there. Now that's cool even by itself, but there's something that's way cooler than that, and that is taking the, the minor pentatonic and the major pentatonic shapes or patterns and connecting them to what we just looked at. So let's start off and look at that G chord, that one chord. Um, I'm going to pull up a diagram on the screen, but remember, if you're a premium member, I've got uh, printouts for you, some PDF files that go along with this lesson. That's going to make this easier to follow along with, uh, with some visuals and all of that stuff. But anyway, I'm going to pull that up. So that's your G chord. Now let's overlay major pentatonic scale pattern four on top of that. So now you can see all of the notes of that major pentatonic scale pattern four. And look at how they connect to this chord shape. You can see some shared notes right into that major pentatonic scale. The reason I'm even mentioning this is now if I'm playing a blues, for example, in the key of G, I can play my G chord here right into the major pentatonic scale pattern four. All of those major pentatonic scale pattern four licks that I know, they're right here next to this chord shape. So I don't even have to think about the rest of the neck. I could basically play everything I need to play, chords and lead, right here. I've got lots of options here. Now, in addition to that, I've got the minor pentatonic scale pattern two right here. So well, let's pull that up on the screen. So you can see there's my G chord and then there is the minor pentatonic scale pattern two overlaid on top of that. And so looking back at my fingering here, where my middle finger is, that G note, look at that. That's right in that uh, minor pentatonic scale pattern two. Now I realize I'm oversimplifying these patterns. I'm just showing you a few notes, not showing you all of them. That's all you need. I'm telling you, you don't need really any more than that. Because with what you've got there, with that major pentatonic scale, uh, which is your happy sounding, more country, happy, positive sounding lead. And then you've got the blues stuff, which is the minor pentatonic scale. It's all right there off of that chord shape. That should be a huge light bulb to a lot of you. So now when it comes to playing any kind of blues, just find this chord shape and you've got... Now you've got your minor. And all that blue stuff that happens right off of uh, that chord shape. So that's what this, um, the song that we're going to be playing, it, it's going to pull from this in, in this uh, first uh, position here. So in fact, now that you've got the basics and understanding of that, let's look at the song then. I'm not, I don't even need to play along with the jam track because I've got, uh, I can play the chords and then the lead. We're going to do a call and response and it's all going to make sense contextually anyway. So here's the first thing we're going to learn. It goes like this. Okay, so it's that G chord. Remember, it's just those three notes out of that C shape, right? That's all we need is that little triad there. And then quickly I go into that major pentatonic scale pattern four that I just explained. So that's gonna be that eighth, or sorry, 10th fret, second string. 
a bend and release. And we play a 10th fret down to the 8th fret, 9th fret 3rd string, and then a hammer on between the 8th fret and the 10th fret. And when I do that bend, I'm not doing a full bend. I'm doing a half bend. A full bend. I could do that, but it sounds too happy, and I wanted it to sound a little bluesier. So that's the lick. So we got the chord. And I go right into that first lead right away. As soon as I hit the chord, I go quickly into the, the lead part. And then I come back and hit the chord again and play another major pentatonic lick. This time, what I'm doing there is I'm doing that same bend on the 10th fret 2nd string and then I'm going to hit that note again and do a pull off and then I do an upstroke on the 9th fret 3rd string there. So it goes... So it goes... And you just have to practice that. And, and if that's too hard and you want to be able to follow along, don't, don't let one thing trip you up. You can just go... Something like that. And then all the way up to the 1st string on the 10th fret. Back to the 8th fret 2nd string. So let's look at that 2nd leg again. Alright, let's back it up from the beginning. So we have... Right? Now we're going to the 4 chord, which is our C chord. It's right there. I just hit that 8th fret 2nd string. I can put my other fingers down and go right into that chord. And then I went... Just walked it down. Look at where I went. I went into pattern 2. See how it sounded a little more bluesy? That's because I went into that pattern 2 of the minor pentatonic scale. So the walk down goes 10, 9, 8, that's on the first string, down to the 6th fret. And then when I come down and I bar on the 8th fret, 2nd string, 1st string, and then 6th fret, 1st string. So that walk down. And then we go back to the 1 chord. So let's take it from the beginning and play uh, up to that point. We have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3... Back to the one chord. And then I went right into that minor pentatonic scale pattern uh, two again. Hopefully this is starting to make sense. You're starting to see, oh, I'm just using the same, I'm just using pattern two of the minor, pattern four of the major. So that's a full bend and release on the eighth fret first string, sixth fret first string, eighth fret second string. And then we go six, eight, six and then we go to the five chord so that's just your d chord and i played my d chord like that because all i need is that triad strings four three and two barred on the seventh fret then i did that bend and release on the ninth fret uh, third string down to the seventh fret third string four chord so look at that, there's your C chord, and then I came up to the 10th fret 2nd string again. Bend and release. 8th fret 1st, 8th fret 2nd string. So from the 5 chord. 4 chord, and then back to the 1 chord. Which is right there, and that... I threw in this final lick there that goes... Let me show you how to do that. So I'm doing a bend on the, this is the 3rd string, 9th fret. We do a bend there, and then I go, so it's a pull off, and then I come down to the 10th fret 4th string. And after that I went, a hammer on between the 8th fret and 9th fret on the 4th string. And then my middle finger, or sorry, my index finger comes up to the 8th fret 2nd string. What are those notes, you ask? There's that G chord. They're just notes in, in that chord. So everything we just played, the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, was all played in this same little uh, uh, position here on the neck, this middle position. Now, one thing I should have mentioned is every th all of the lead stuff I'm doing for this is played in the key of the song. I'm not trying to, 
to play the chord changes. I'm not trying to have a very sophisticated sounding, jazzy sounding, however you want to describe it, sound where I, when I go to the C chord, I switch and play a C major scale or something like that. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just staying in the key of the song. That's how most of like your Chicago blues stuff is. If the song is played in the key of G in this case, it doesn't matter what the chords are. You're just playing G pentatonics, major or minor. And so that's all I'm doing for this whole thing. Uh, even as we switch, and we're going to go into another uh, position now and look at that. Um, so that's giving you some ideas, I think, just to kind of get started there. Um, let me go back and play through that, um, that first um, position one more time. And we've got two other positions. We've got one up high, and then we've got one down here. And I've got the major and um, minor pentatonic scales to connect with those as well. I've also got visuals that go with all of that, as I mentioned, PDF documents. If you're a premium member, you have access to all of that, the jam track and everything. I'm gonna back up and play through this pattern one more time and then I'll see you in part two where we'll go over the other two um, positions. So here we go, one, two, one, two, three. Oh, and I should also mention, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you do that. You hit the subscribe button, click the alert bell, so you can be notified when I put out new lessons, which I do every Friday. So, all right, we'll see you in part two.